Hello, hello! Today we're going to take a look at Arcadia Quest from Cool Mini or Not. And one of the designers is Eric Lang, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite game designers because I don't like everything that he does, but consistently he puts out good work. Arcadia Quest uh, was a Cool Mini or Not Kickstarter campaign, as they all are, uh, for all of their games. Made a ton of money and uh, was a little notorious for a couple of things. I'm not going to belabor the points. I talked about a lot of this in my unboxing video, but first it was a significant departure for the company because it was an encapsulated competitive board game designed to be played very quickly within like 60 to 90 minutes, whereas uh, affairs like Zombie Side were like at least two hours and just had tons and tons of setup time. This one can be very, very quick. Um, the other thing is that uh, they were charging people for shipping for the first time, I seem to remember, with this campaign. Maybe they did it for the campaign before that. And also, there were some exclusives in this game, including an entire expansion pack in a giant Guildmaster box that you will not get if you do not pledge for the campaign, which really ticked off a lot of different people. So I'm lucky that I got the Kickstarter pledge for this, and um, I won't go over too many of the extras for that. I might make a different video for that, but still I kind of wish they had made the exclusives available to everyone. But nevertheless, the theme of Arcadia Quest is kind of your typical generic fantasy setting, but it uses chibi-style anime artwork for the design. And it is a pure competitive game. You are trying to complete quests out on a modular board that you create before the game. You can do a campaign mode and follow their instructions or just make your own board. Um, and, this, and each of those boards will be populated with monsters and other different objects that you might be able to grab. And of course, your competitors. You're actually fielding a team of heroes of fantasy characters that you'll kinda, you can either pick yourself or draft beforehand. You put the miniatures out and then you are in it and you are trying to complete these different mission cards which might be kill a certain number of monsters, grab a certain item, and of course knock out people from the other teams. And it's not a uh, wipe out everyone affair, it's just you trying to complete at least three quests or possibly more or less depending on how you're setting up the game. Uh, I've probably said enough here, let's go ahead and do a brief overview of the game, then we're going to come back, I'll let you know what I think. Okay, I'm just going to run you through a very quick overview of Arcadia Quest. This is just the basic setup for the first scenario in the campaign book. You can play the game as a campaign or you can just do it as a one shot. If you do want to play as a campaign, they give you this uh, pad of uh, sheets here to use for keeping track of all of your different stats and all of your different items. And in fact, that's what this whole deck of cards are. These are all different types of uh, items that you can upgrade and buy, but we're not really going to get too into that. I just want to give you a taste of how the game is played. Now, Arcadia Quest is a competitive game for two to four players. It takes place in a fantasy world where you are fielding a team of heroes representing your guild. And as your guild, you're trying to bring glory to the guild by meeting certain quests. Up here at the top of the camera, we have all these different quest cards. I'll just show you a couple of them. So for instance, this one here says kill three monsters. So you actually, each guild will have these little guild markers. These might be different than the ones you have in the, the normal retail. This is from the um, Kickstarter edition, just so you know. Um, the, but they'll be with your color, uh, corresponding to your guild sheet over there. You'll put it on here every time you kill a monster. When you get to three monsters, you've completed this quest. And if you're the first to do it, you might actually get a gold reward. Other types, you have uh, Find the Lost Weapons. Now this one is specific to this scenario, but other scenarios, uh, excuse me, other scenarios may use it as well. And uh, specifically what that means is that you have these two little quest tokens out here on the map. So if you can find one of those two tokens, you'll actually complete the quest for your guild. If uh, then someone else can do that as well, but there's only two, so only two of the potentially four players are gonna be able to complete that quest at all. And then, of course, there is one card for every color of player. Uh, so if you each of these signifies that if you kill a hero on the other team, you're going to get to put your quest marker here. It counts as a fulfilled quest. And these, everyone can do, but of course, you, you can only do it once, and you can't kill your own guys to get a quest marker on it. Um, also, for this particular scenario, and for, and for most others, you have to complete three quests. One of them has to be one of the non uh, guild specific quests, so either finding lost weapons or killing monsters. So you'll have your big character sheet down here 
where you can keep your individual player cards for the different heroes. Let me show you this one because it's uh, David Bowie from Labyrinth. Uh, yeah. So you have the name, you'll have how many hit points they can, they have how many defense dice they can roll. These are the defense dice and they have only one shield and then one crit symbol. A crit on any die counts as a success for anything you're trying to do. And in fact, you get to reroll crits and maybe even get more of whatever you're trying to do, shields or swords or bows or more crits and just keep rolling and rolling. So it's like Warhammer um, exploding dice. Um, then every character has a different special ability. So Hitch here has when sharing a space with a hero, you may attack with one of that hero's unexhausted attack cards without exhausting it. And that's the other thing. Everyone starts with starting items representing spells or ranged weapons or uh, melee weapons. You get to, every time you want to make an attack, you have to use one of them, and then you have to exhaust it. So this one here, the rusty blade, it, it'll tell you how many dice you get to roll if you want to make a melee attack. Melee attacks in this game are always going to be close. So close is just a the space that you're in, and then every orthogonal square next to you. Ranged attacks kind of break those rules, so long as you have line of sight and you can draw an imaginary line. I hate line of sight, so let's not talk about it anymore. I hate line of sight rules. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so you have your starting items, you can dispense them as you wish, but when they're exhausted, they're exhausted. On your turn, you have uh, two different things you can do. You can either move and attack, or you can rest. If you rest, all of your heroes that are wounded or knocked out get resurrected and brought back to full health, and they get spawned either in your starting area, which is be like in this map, it's here and here and here and here. And also, you get rid of status effects, and all of your items become unexhausted. You can use them again. But if you decide not to do that, which takes your whole turn, you can decide to uh, move and attack. You don't have to do them in that order, but you can't break them up. So you can't move a couple spaces, then attack, then move again. You have three movement points per, uh, w well, you only activate one model in your turn. So you have three movement points to spend, and then you have one attack you can do, either before or after. So let's say that uh, this is my team here, and I wanted to move this green fella. They, by the way, these are pretty cool miniatures, I will say. Might as well take the time to show you. A few of those. Some of these are heroes in the base game, some of them are not. I do apologize, I just didn't feel like separating them. Here's the monsters that are on the board, I'll explain that in a minute. So, if I wanted to move out here, I have to spend one action point just to, or one movement point just to open up the door, and then I move out. Now, I'm in a, a bit of a pickle because I can try and move into this monster space, but monsters are kind of passive. They don't really do much on their own, they're never going to be moving around. But if you try to do something to them or move into their space, then they're going to move and potentially attack you as well. So instead, I'm just going to stay there, not risk it, um, and I'm going to try to attack him. So I'm going to look at uh, whatever I have. I'm not really matching up the minis here, but let's say that I was attacking with the parrying blade here. So I have two black dice. I'll go ahead and roll that. And for a melee attack, I'm looking to get swords. You have swords, bows, and crit symbols on here. Hey, look at that. I got two swords. Boom. Awesome. Now, for monsters, they don't really get to defend. You're just going to look at whatever their hit points are. And you're going to have... So there's uh, orc warriors, and there are goblin archers out here on the board. Here's the goblin archer, by the way. So there's several of them out here on the board. So you're going to look at their card, and you're going to see their hit points. And then uh, this is actually the overkill symbol. So it only takes two hits to kill one of these orcs. And they have different levels of orcs, depending on which ones you want to use. But... If you don't kill, if you don't deal at least three wounds, which is their uh, overkill number here, then they're going to get to attack you back. If you do deal at least three wounds, then they just kill them outright. They don't get a chance to attack you. But if they do get to attack you, just like with a normal hero's attack, you're going to look at how many dice they get to roll, and they even get to move one space first, which means they can close the distance to you, and then they make an attack. And it's the same thing. Now, for heroes getting attacked, however, and for heroes attacking other heroes, that's when you get to roll defense. You're gonna look at whatever your defense rating is, roll that many dice, and shields cancel out attacks and crits, or whatever whatever the relevant attack is. So shields cancel swords, shields cancel um, bows, and shields cancel crits. But remember, you're rolling crits over and over again. And it could be the same thing with defense. So you could, even if you think you're gonna die, you might get really lucky and roll a lot of crits. So that's how attacking works. When you decide to, you're done, you've done your movement points, you've done your attack, then it's gonna to go to the next player and so on. Um, there's a couple other interesting things of note out here on the board. One is portals, portals connect together. So in this particular scenario, all four of these portals, because they're all the same color, link up. They could be different colors in a different scenario. 
Uh, when you go into a space that has a portal, you can then spend another movement point to hop into the portal and pop out at any of the other portals on the board, and then even continue your movement if you have enough movement points left. You also, oh, you know what? I'm sorry, I actually forgot to populate the map with these happy little fellows. Let's just say this is how they're supposed to be. <laughs> Actually, that is how they're supposed to be. Those are exploration tokens. If you end your move in a space with an exploration token or even with the quest tokens and there's no monster there, you get to pick that up, immediately reveal it to everyone, and that hero gets to take it. And these can be one-shot items like take another turn with this hero, activate it again, or um, gain a coin, or heal all your wounds, things like that. Uh, there are also respawn points. Now, every time a monster is killed, you're going to put them on this respawn board. And whenever the respawn board is completely full, at the end of that player's turn, you're going to have to roll to respawn. For every monster here, you roll the two dice. If it links up to any of these respawn points with the symbols here, then that monster immediately pops in there. If the space is already full, which means it has two models in it, it goes back in the box. Or if there, the symbols that you roll are not actually on the board anywhere on any of those, uh, in this case, four tokens, it also goes back in the box. But once the respawn's done, it goes to the next player. And this is really what you're going to do. You're going to keep taking your turn, activating your models, trying to uh, fulfill all the quests, killing other heroes, killing monsters, getting uh, whatever quest tokens happen to be in the game, flitting about the board, using your special abilities, and so on. There's all kinds of cool bits, at least if you got the uh, some of the extra Kickstarter add-ons like coins. Coins, which are what you'll use to actually upgrade your weapons in between quests. So it's really only important for campaign mode. Um, sometimes it's relevant to keep track of how many people, how many times a hero has died. So you use these skull trackers for that. Um, and there's just, there's a lot more stuff here, but this is just the basic game, a little uh, taste of what the gameplay is like. So let's get to my final thoughts. Thematically, Arcadia Quest, like I said, has sort of a generic fantasy setting, although I like it. I like the artwork and I, and I do like, um, all the different characters. There's, even if you play in campaign mode, it doesn't really feel like you're playing through a story that much. At least it didn't to me. Um, I've just kind of started the campaign mode, so maybe that feeling will come out more as time goes on. But I don't really think it's about that. I think it's about having a very, very nice presentation. The components are awesome. Very nice cardboard chips and uh, chits and the boards and the miniatures are just incredible. They're really sturdy, I mean, durable miniatures, but nevertheless, they managed to get very, very good detail on them. And once again, I wish that I could paint. <laughs> Maybe one day. Uh, but even on their own, they really, really look great, and they're distinct enough that if you don't paint them, you're not going to have too much of an issue. Uh, let me address this now, because I think one thing I didn't mention in my intro that I probably should have is that the one comparison people are always going to make with this, and I've already heard other reviewers do this, is comparing this game to Super Dungeon Explorer. To me, it's not a comparison. There should be no comparison between the two of them because the only thing they have in common are that they use chibi miniatures. They don't even, I mean, I guess they're both kind of dungeon crawls too, but they don't even feel remotely the same in that regard either. Super Dungeon Ex Explorer is very different, not just in how the mechanics work, but in the fact that it's a one versus all game where you have people working together and it feels more like Gauntlet, the board game with tons and tons of monsters pouring out. And it's a more complicated game. It's a longer game. Um, and I do not think that one replaces the other at all. They stand on their own. It just matters what you're looking for. If you want that cooperative nature, especially since the Forgotten King um, expansion standalone game will be coming out later this year, hopefully before the end of the year, and is actually going to make the game fully cooperative with their arcade mode if you want, which means it would be completely different from Arcadia Quest. So, but even as it is now, they're just different games. You have to decide which one you prefer and which one you want to get, or if you want to get both of them. As of right now, and we'll just jump right into it, we're going to open this thing up right now. As of right now, Arcadia Quest is an awesome game. I still think I like Super Dungeon Explorer a little bit more. That may change as I play Arcadia Quest more, but then when Forgotten King comes out, all bets are off. I think that I'll probably love Super Dungeon Explorer even more than that. But let me be very clear, Arcadia Quest is awesome. It is so rare that I get a new game because of being a board game reviewer and having to just get out, you know, I, I always try to play a game at least a couple of times. If I need more, I'll do more, depending on how I feel about it, or if the game is just abjectly awful, I'll probably know after one full play. Although even then, I'll usually play a game again just to try a variant that maybe is in the rules, something like that. But it is so rare for me to do that all in one sitting. I'll usually say, well, I need to play this game again. Let's put it to the side. We'll do it another day. Arcadia Quest, we knocked out three games of this sucker back to back to back. 
different scenarios. I had to. It was fun. It was just fun. And it's relatively fast. If it had been, been a longer experience, and this is the edge I will give it over Super Dungeon Explorer, if it had been a longer experience, it probably I probably wouldn't like it as much and it wouldn't have gotten played as much. But the fact that you can really it feels fast and you can knock it out fast, it is so, it is to its benefit. It works out so well for this game. Because this is just it, the it, the rules explanation for this game will be a while. That's another knock I'll have against it. It's really not a complicated game at all, but the rule book doesn't lay everything out all that clearly, and there are a little, lot of little details, but once you know that, it's a very straightforward game. You are just running out there trying to hit something, whether it's monsters or the other opponents, or you know, flying around the board, picking up tokens, all of this stuff is relatively basic. But that's kind of to its benefit. It, you know, you still, it's not a total random dice checker because you can, you know, have some influence over how you pick your team. You can pick team members that will work in tandem and work well together. Um, you have, there is strategy and tactics involved in how you move and what goals you go after first and who you avoid, who you go right after, right off the bat. Do you wait for people just to get knocked down before you even attempt to go after them? So while it is simple and while it is straightforward and while there is a lot of randomness to the dice, there's still tactics here and it feels like you have control over your team. So I like that a lot. I like, and I do like the idea of the quest. That's probably the coolest thing because I didn't really know a lot about that going into it. And I thought, well, how is this gonna work? Am I just gonna like get a point for killing someone and hope that I have enough points by some predetermined set time? But no, the having those, to complete the different quests depending on what the scenario is really gives the game a nice sense of urgency because you know it's you and it also promotes interaction because if you know that someone is on the cusp of completing the required quest you're going to be like whoa, whoa okay everyone gang up on him stop that from happening um and it doesn't just feel like a gang up on the leader thing because you're also still trying to win and if you it's very easy to get distracted on the way to impeding someone else if you think you can get a quest right away like Hmm, I don't know about this. Maybe he won't win the game on the next turn. So there's some cool uh, cool dynamics going on there between the different players. I like all the different characters. I think they all feel very distinct and different from one another, which is always a great thing, having special character powers and having them feel genuinely unique and different from each one. And it's always cool. There's enough heroes even in the base box, but especially if you're lucky enough to get the Guildmaster Pledge, Enough heroes that you can have a lot of variety in each game. All the different monsters you can use. Oh man, every game of this is going to be different. And if you play through campaign mode, which I've only just started with the last game that we did, you have even more options. You can upgrade your characters, get more equipment. That's probably the most fun that we had was like, yes, now we can actually use the coins and get cool stuff. <laughs> so, but you don't have to do that. You can play this as like an episodic thing, just one shots, one at a time, and still have a ton of fun with this. And I probably would, even if I was trying to have the same people consistently do the campaign mode, I would still bust out the game and play it with new people and just say, this scenario is a cool one, let's start this, this is good for beginners. That's what you can do with this game. It's just so fun. I, I really think that it lives up to the hype in this regard. Again, I still think Super Dungeon Explorer is a better game for me personally. I know people will disagree with me on this, but um, Arcadia Quest, Definitely, definitely one to check out. Love the components, love the theme. Not that it feels like a story so much, but just the idea of the chibi fantasy characters going around and beating the crap out of each other really, really works for this. Love the quest mode. Um, it's The setup is a pain. The the learning the rules is a pain. And it is it is a Meritrash, you know? It's got that exploding dice mechanic, which is cool, but that other people are going to hate. And there were people I played this with who were diehard Euro gamers who were just so infuriated by those dice. So please keep that in mind before you play this. This is not like the um, Ameritrash game that you play with Euro gamers to try and turn them. It's not gonna happen, but for what it is, really, really great. Really enjoyed my time with it, and you should check it out. My name is Nick, this has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way. Take care.